Siobhan, tell us how children grieve, a little bit about how younger children grieve and how that's different from how older children grieve. Well, with younger children, usually um, they're at an age where they're really young to have developed the language to understand grief and death and dying. And so um, they might have a lot of acting out behaviors, um, showing you know their different feelings, and they are very playful, and they have magical thinking, and they don't understand the permanence of death. And so they might say things like, for instance, if grandma dies, they'll say, well, when grandma comes back, we'll go to the beach. And so that's why it's very important to be uh, very honest and simple words to give them the information they need to know about what's going on. And they might ask the question over and over again, and it's just very good to continue to answer the question in a supportive way. And then with children who are um, a little bit older, like elementary school age, they have a little bit more awareness of what death is, and that could be very scary for them. So they'll ask a lot of questions too, and um, it's just good to continue to reassure them and you know let them know um, things about um, death, dying, and illness in a very concrete, honest way. With teenagers and adolescents, they're very aware of what death is and um, and they might react like adults do, but they lack coping skills to uh, address how they're feeling. And um, it just becomes very important to offer them the outlets that they feel comfortable with and they like peer support and, and groups are very good for them. Is it okay for parents to show their grief? I imagine it would be a hard thing for a parent to hear a child say, when, when grandma comes next week, we'll go to the beach. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how do parents manage that? Well, parents, it's very important for parents to grieve appropriately and, and model for their children. That statement might make a parent very sad, and so they might tear up and start to cry, but it's important to tell the child, you know what, I'm very sad because I know that grandma's not coming back because she's died, and just explain that to them, explain to them what that really means. Some parents think that they can keep the illness a secret from their kids, so they don't tell them that grandma is declining or dying. Mm -hmm. They just keep it a big secret. What do you think about that, and what experiences have you had where the child knows what's going on despite mom or dad trying to keep it a big secret? Um, I think it's very important for uh, caregivers and parents to be very honest uh, with the child about what's going on um, with their loved one or caregiver um, and actually what's going on around them. Children are much more aware than we give them credit for and they have the same emotions and responses even though they're in a different way that adults do. So it's very important that we share the information that they need to help them to get through those things. I am currently working with a little boy whose grandma is dying and he lives in a home with his grandma and he's watching her um, decline very rapidly and the family believes that he does he knows that she's sick but he doesn't know that she's actually going to die so we've been working on an activity because we work day to day wherever he's at so we worked on an activity a painting activity where he paints a portion of the object to represent him and the other side represents his grandma and on the side of his grandma, he painted a beautiful blue sky and his grandma's name in clouds. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't interpret art, but I would think that this little boy knows that his grandma's going to die. So it's best not to keep secrets. Yes, I believe that. Siobhan, a common question we get in the briefing center is, can you please tell my child that grandpa died or that my husband died? Or how do I tell my child that their loved one died? What kind of language should I use? What specifically should I say? They're a little bit almost frantic at that mm -hmm. point. What would you recommend to these parents? How, what language should they use? How should they tell them? Should it be them that tells them or a different person? Well, I think it's very important that parents and caregivers 
tell their children themselves because they're they are the people that the children feel safe with that's who they get their information from that's who guides them through their life and so um it, it it's very important that they get that information from them it's also important that children are given information again in an honest way and also in simple ways that they're able to understand and phrases that they're familiar with. So just depending on what developmental stage that they're in. With younger children, they need simple language and concrete information. With older children, they have more complex needs and understanding. So you do want to be more, in, uh, more detailed with your information and be prepared to answer very difficult questions. What about, I've heard, um parents say the angels came and took him or mm -hmm. he went to sleep. Mm -hmm. What do you think about things like that? I think we need to be careful about the information that we give children because they, especially younger children, if you tell a child that the, uh, the angels came and got grandpa, that could be scary. So then they'll see angels and they'll be like, are they gonna come and get me too? Or if I go to sleep tonight, am I never gonna come back? And so we need to be very honest about where grandpa is, what has happened to him, where his body is, you know, the process, you know, in ways that they can understand so that to prevent from causing any confusion. And there'll be repeated questions over and over again, and that's just something I tell parents to be prepared for.